Hi, my name is Santos Tobias, and this is Team 5's Band in a Box project proposal. Today, I, Aaron Siegel, Sean Del Wright, and Joseph Woodrell will be discussing with you our project's problem description, requirements, constraints, and design criteria. We will then each describe our instruments and conclude our presentation with a summary and citations. Problem description. Team 5 has been selected to design compact instruments for the band Maroon and Gold 4 to use on their next tour. The band's interest is in unique instruments that fit in a two-foot cube box. The box must include at least one wind, one percussion, and one string instrument. Each instrument must demonstrate multiple tones and be able to collaboratively play Maroon and Gold 4's one hit wonder, O to Joy. And now on to Aaron with our project's requirements and constraints. Thank you, Santos. Aaron Siegel here. I will be talking about requirements and constraints for the Band in the Box project. All instruments must fit in a two foot by two foot by two foot box. They must produce tones to play high, medium, and low voices of O to Joy. Total materials used are limited to a combined 10 feet of pipe and 6 feet of st string for piano or guitar. A $15 maximum budget is allotted to each team member. Tax and shipping is not included and any recycled material must be cost estimated. There's also $1 flat fee for paint and color. And now on to Joseph for criteria in the decision matrix. Thank you, Aaron. This is Joseph Woodrell to discuss the criteria and decision making that we used to decide which band in the box design we would end up going with. Our primary criteria were size, cost effectiveness, as being aesthetically pleasing, being able to generate multiple tones, and the overall craftsmanship required to build the individual instruments. Our decision matrix laid out our weightings that we chose for all three designs, and while the design that we ended up choosing, design one, was not the most aesthetically pleasing um, and required slightly higher craftsmanship, it was the best as far as size and cost effectiveness in our, in our assessments, so that is the one we ended up choosing to go with. Thank you. In conclusion, we, will, we have seen that each instrument that's been modeled is able to play the selected tones or notes that are in the song Ode to Joy that the band will be playing. Each instrument has been modeled and designed to be able to fit in the 2x2x2 two by two by two box that the band is going to wheel on and off the stage. Each instrument has also been designed in such a way that it will come in under the $15 budget that the band has put on per instrument. Here's a list of references that we have used to be able to model, to be able to find conversion factors, and come up with the rest of the information that we need in order to design our project. Thank you. Team 5 decided for their wind instrument a bamboo windpipe. Played upright like a clarinet, but with no mouthpiece so it supports being played like a flute. The instrument is designed to stand straight up in the band's box, which supports our size constraints, and will have fingering holes to vary the pitch for all the required frequencies. This supports our material constraints and meets our criteria for achieving multiple tones. The bamboo windpipe will also be designed with strings to give it kind of a native appeal, all of which can be budgeted for a whopping $7.05. You'll notice that we take into account the one opening at the end of the pipe. As you can see, the length of my instrument will vary based on the mid-range tones required to play Maroon and Gold 4's song, Ode to Joy. I have a max length of 32.8 centimeters, which is approximately 1-3 inches, to achieve a full octave with the required notes. I then compensated for the length by subtracting 0.61 times the radius to achieve the corrected length for supporting the frequencies calculated on the spreadsheet. And now on to Aaron with our first percussion instrument. My instrument is the high range percussion instrument. As you can see in my sketch, I chose a cantilever design. It is six copper pipes attached to one end of a square MDF board. A square MDF board will be eight inches by inches and be three quarters of an inch thick. It'll easily fit into the bottom of the box as required. It is more of a modified xylophone. And to make this instrument, I will use MATLAB and with the given equations and variables, and that will help me calculate a table, and the table will hold the frequencies along with the lengths that have been calculated. And lastly, as you can see in my budget, 
Not many materials are used, and I easily fall under the $15 budget constraint, using only four different items. For my design, I chose to do a fauna fiddle style instrument, which is essentially a single stringed uh, instrument similar to a fiddle. However, rather than resonating inside the body of itself only, it actually has an acoustic horn attached to the body, which is what primarily produces the amplification effect to hear the, hear the notes that the instrument is playing. Um, the primary strength of the instrument will come from a square steel uh, tube, which will be used as the backbone to resist the strength of the string being tensioned. Uh, there will be a small RC servo on the very end of the metal bar, which is going to change the tension of the string, which is how it will vary the tone of the instrument as it's being played. A second small servo will actually be moving the bow back and forth, so the instrument will be fully automated once the, basically you hit the start button, it will play the song you teach it to. Um, and it will draw the bow back and forth across the string to generate the sound. If that does not work, a secondary backup plan is to change it to a plucking type uh, playing arrangement to where the secondary servo will just pluck the string and the primary servo will adjust the tension to change the tone. Uh, the main wooden body will be constructed out of balsa wood because it's easy to work with and um, relatively inexpensive to obtain. And then it will be automated with a microcontroller, uh, TI MSP430, uh, because those are what I'm most familiar with. Um, my sketch of the instrument can be seen here, and the this sketch was done before I realized there was a requirement to fold the neck up in order to make the instrument fit within the final 2x2x2 two by two by two box. But it will be updated um, to accommodate the folding mechanism once I figure out how I'm going to build that into it. Um, here's my equations of how I figured out my proper tension that I'm going to need for the string. I selected a PL024, which is just an off-the-shelf uh, lower range guitar string with a 0.024 inch diameter. Um, got, the, got the specifications for that type of string from the manufacturer so I could run the calculations, which are shown here, uh, to allow me to obtain the notes required for my low voice section of Ode to Joy. Um, and the tension range is within the strings capabilities, so that should allow me to tune everything in how I want to. Um, this shows the budget that I have. I'm pushing the limit on being able to stay under $15, and that may require me to drop down from using a bow and just going to a plucking arrangement, because that would save me probably at least 30% of my budget just in the bow and the various stuff required to use that method of obtaining sound from the string. Thank you. Thank you, man. For this design project, I was tasked with coming up with a mid-range percussion instrument. Now, in the song Ode to Joy, it has 11 different notes that need to be played, hence the 11 different bars that you can be seen here. Now, since it's going to be a traditional xylophone style, each bar is going to be anchored using a wooden dowel. You're going to be able to play this using a bouncy ball that's been attached to a pencil. When it's all said and done, and the band is finished, the whole thing will break down and fit into the box. The percussion instrument that I've designed is going to be 8 inches in length, 6 inches in height. Each bar will be 3 8 inches in width and height, with varying lengths to hit the different notes that need to be played. As you can see, We'll have a traditional xylophone style, largest on one side, smallest on the other. And you'll be able to use your mallet that you can see here. Now, to model all this, I used MATLAB. In MATLAB, I had to come up with several different equations to be able to find all 11 different lengths. To start, I used two different thicknesses of the bar that I planned on using. I started with 3 quarters inch and 1 inch. Now both worked. However, there was another constraint that we had to take into account, which is cost. With that, the cost to be able to make all 11 notes be playable was too much. So I started playing with different sizes. I found that 3 8 was going to be the cheapest, so that's what I went with. Right here is the equation that I have in MATLAB to be able to model everything. Now. This chart shows the different notes associated with the different frequencies, which are then associated with the different lengths that would be needed. 
To be able to play all of these notes, I'm going to have to have bars varying in length between 16.3 inches and 9.69 inches. Cost. The cost of the solid metal bar is going to be $11.48 to get me a roughly 14 feet. I'm going to need one bouncy ball, which you can get from your local convenience store for about 25 cents. A pencil, depending on what kind you're using, 10 cents or less. And then I'm going to be able to find scrap wood that is just lying around and I'm going to use that, which is valued at about $3, to be able to craft my legs and my wooden dowels, totaling $14.83, which comes in under the $15 constraint limit per instrument that the band has set.